Aaron Harrison coming to you from Cloud Expo in Santa Clara, California. And I'm joined today by Paul Speciale, who is Vice President of Products for Ampladata. Welcome, Paul. Thank you. It's very nice to be here, Aaron. Um, so tell us, what does Ampladata do exactly? Okay, so Ampladata is a company that is all about solving problems with large-scale data. So our solution is essentially one that looks at the problems that exist today with storing large-scale data on high-density disk drives. People traditionally do this with RAID technologies or replication technologies. There's problems with both. So those are the problem spaces that we go after. For example, with RAID, with the large density drives that we have today, the chance of data loss has increased tremendously. In fact, it's due to the fact that you may have multiple disk failures, or even with one disk failure, you may have a second disk failure occur while you're rebuilding the RAID set that protects the data. Um, there's also an increasing probability now of read errors. As one disk fails, as you're rebuilding, if you hit an unrecoverable disk error during that RAID rebuild, the data can actually be lost. So we solve that problem very effectively through a new algorithm. Secondly, we also eliminate the need to replicate the data, which increases people's footprint and drives up their costs. So that's the second thing that we're, uh, we're all about solving. Okay, and what solutions do you actually provide and what are some of those innovations that make that possible? Okay, what Ampla Data has actually built is a distributed storage system. It's called Ampla Store. And th this is really all about a system that stores data across a, a whole number of nodes. It's able to take the data and spread them across the back end. Uh, so you might build a system that's consisting of something like eight or 10 nodes in a single data center. You may then have multiple data centers. And what we do is take care of distributing that data uniformly across that back end. Now the way we do that is by eliminating the use of RAID or replication. And that's really powerful because it eliminates those problems that people are experiencing with RAID, like data loss and extra high footprint. Instead, we use a technology under the covers called erasure coding. So this is something that people have, have used in the past in areas like encryption. Uh, essentially, we encrypt the data to allow you to tolerate any number of failures that, you're, that you uh, need to tolerate. For example, you might say sprinkle the data across 16 back-end disks, but tolerate four failures. Or you might say spread it across four data centers and tolerate one fail uh, the failure of one data center. In any case, we protect the data. So as long as there's a sufficient number according to your policy, we can bring that back the data, and we've delivered this with a much lower footprint and much lower overhead than RAID or RAID and replication technology. So would you say then that um, business continuity and disaster recovery is helping drive adoption of cloud? Very much so. So I think what we're all about is the fact that cloud is naturally distributed. So a storage system like this can live in distributed locations, but moreover, it can make use of the fact that some of the, the sites may be unavailable at certain times and still reconstruct the data. Right, so this is very much analogous to, say, a cell phone, where you're, you're roaming around from cell tower to cell tower. In certain cases, the towers are unavailable. That's the same idea here with the data. As long as there's a sufficient number of sites that we can read the data from, we can reconstruct it, and hence provide uptime and high availability and access to the data. And who are Ampladata's uh, primary customers, and what are you hearing from them? Okay, so we're a little broad-based. We're, we're certainly interested in cloud computing. So we've targeted service providers that are building clouds. And in fact, some of the initial customers that we have are cloud service providers. So they're embedding our system in their cloud infrastructures, um, and they use it underneath things like hypervisor environments. Uh, the second area would be online applications. So something like uh, large-scale video deployments, uh, mu online music deployments, or even surveillance data. And then thirdly, backup. This is an area where people really want low cost, right? So storing petabytes of data potentially, but doing that with the overhead of having to keep multiple copies, that's prohibitive for them. Mm -hmm. So what we provide is an ability to store that data with better data protection, but to squeeze the footprint down and keep the costs down. And what about this ongoing trend of uh, the density of data? How are, you, how are you addressing that? That's a very key thing. If you look at today at the large scale data deployments in the industry, how are people storing that data? They're really looking to drive down the cost, and the best way to do that is to buy the largest disk densities you can. So today we're actually seeing two terabyte individual disk drives. Next year we expect to see four terabyte, and then beyond that eight terabyte disk drives. Well that just makes the problems of RAID all the worse. It essentially means that if you have a failure of a disk that's four terabytes within a RAID set, you could be spending a week rebuilding that data. So that's the problem we're after. We want to minimize that exposure, eliminate that probability of data loss, which can sometimes lead, lead up to two or three data loss events per year in petabyte scale data sets, and really drive that down. So now you can use these large disk drives, maintain the low cost point, but furthermore maintain the protection levels without being exposed to the vulnerabilities that RAID introduces. Okay, and any predictions you want to make for 2011 and 
where you see the industry headed? Yeah, I certainly see the more adoption in cloud. I think we, we believe that the hybrid model of cloud makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So people that will deploy internal private clouds, use external resources to burst. But again, these systems are generating tremendous amounts of data. In fact, one of the studies I've heard is that um, if you are buying a dollar's worth of hypervisors, you're actually spending five dollars on the storage uh, underlying the hypervisor. So if you can shave 50% off of the cost of managing that storage, that makes tremendous sense. And that's the type of savings that we're talking about here. So this is very applicable to the cost, the lower cost advantages that the cloud is trying to drive. And then as far as uh, Ampla data, what, what are some of the goals that you have for next year? Well, the company's very focused. So this is a company that's based in Europe. Uh, we have R&D in Europe. We have a presence in the United States for our, our operations. Uh, what's very important to us, to us is to build references. So that's what we're laser focused on, is finding those key partners in the U.S. that are the cloud service providers, the online data providers, the backup providers, those with very large scale data needs and building that reference base. And that's our number one goal for 2011. Okay, well thank you, Paul. Thank you, Aaron. I've been speaking with Paul Speciale, Vice President of Products for Ampla Data. I'm Aaron Harrison coming to you from Cloud Expo in Santa Clara, California.